Hello, everybody. It's been three days since my last upload. In today's TED rant, we are going to be developing a a, a formula, an algorithm, I, I don't know, um, based on a handful of notable content creator grooming statistics. And we will attempt to identify trends that will help predict uh, what part of a content creator's career will most likely lead to a Colleen Ballinger 9-11. Now, I'm no scientist, but I, I know enough to do a good amount of shitty, poorly done research to put together a garbage presentation. But before we get to that, there are some well-dressed elephants in the room that we need to discuss. Uh, first off, I took a brief respite after school ended, and when I came back, there were suddenly 30,000 of you. Um, so... Welcome to the family. There's a mandatory 2 a.m. curfew and don't touch the Smirnoffs in the fridge. Uh, enjoy the video. All of my videos are schizophrenic rants with only so much verifiable truth to them. Uh, this video is no exception. But let's be honest here, you're not here for academic integrity. You're here because of the funny title. Or if you're a returning viewer, it's because you're trying to steal the Smirnoffs in the fridge. But if you are someone who is coming to my channel for razor accurate data, maybe you should make sure that this source is MLA approved before you trust it. Uh, spoiler alert, it's not. Now, in the last five years, there have been... I don't know if there's been an increase, necessarily, but content creator grooming allegations certainly catch a lot more attention these days. So much so that it's kind of become a kind of a trope in online culture. Like, you know, someone someone hits the internet, uh, they they get their subscribe button hit a lot, and then they, they hit on a minor, and then their career takes a dent. Even some of you guys have asked me, albeit politely, not to groom a minor in the future. But no promises, because we need to see what the conclusion of today's findings are first. And I've gathered here a list of notable content creator grooming allegation cases. Keyword allegations, by the way. I have about 10 names. And yes, I'm well aware that I only chose cases that are, are well known. Because number one, I wanted a pool that had relatively similar creator sizes across the board. And number two, let's be honest. Terrible deeds by unimportant people are not nearly as exciting or interesting. But I digress. I am fully aware that some people on this list didn't actually do the things that they, they were allegedly doing. But I'm not really trying to predict actual wrongdoing so much as I'm trying to predict allegations. So let us analyze these factors to see which ones follow a trend and which ones are not very relevant. Let's start with the easiest one. Age of the alleged groomer. Uh when she what did she do again she texted minors right in 2020 a 17 year old fan yada 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 damn all right dream mr dream we all know the guy we all know his chin all right we're getting a bit of a a, a variety in age range here mini lad oh damn holy shit sorry okay we got our we got our our, our stuff here okay Ice cream sales. You know what? Let's do that. Now, here's what I learned. Um, the majority of it did it during their 20s. The average age uh, was 21. There was a median of 25, and uh, I box plotted it, and I got a range of 21 to 30. Now, this makes a lot of sense, because uh, young adults are typically the ones who get caught in these types of cases, uh, in part because they're still in that window where they can still relate on some level to older minors. Now, is age a relevant factor, though? Yes, because we found a common trend. Next factor. Marital slash partner status. Among the pool, what I learned was that there was quite a broad range. So we had one divorcee, two people who were happily married, one of them with kids, uh, a handful with partners, and two people whose allegations revolved around hookup culture. Uh, so honestly, the only thing I learned is that YouTube grooming is not ELO based when it comes to general relationship experience. So this factor, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, I, I don't think it matters as much. So while most of the people on Chris Hansen's TV show might be fellas who are generally the dregs of society. You don't have riz. In this case, in which we are talking about content creators, these are people with personalities, albeit many times insufferable ones. Next the average age of the community. But there were some outliers. Uh, I removed EDP. Without the outlier data, this is what I learned. 
About half of them had the age of 16 to 20 within their demographic age range. And I got 18.5 on average and a 15 to 21 box plot. Now, another question I had, is the age of the minor they groomed the same as their audience? And this is what I found. Based on the pool that I have, five out of the 10 I analyzed had an audience pool that included a lot of minors. However, there are some strings attached. The things that directly cause these kinds of events, external factors such as access to minors or being a member of Congress, don't directly cause these things. But if a creator happens to have those external factors, they are more likely to, to fall into something like that. Okay, so so my original assumption was that this might be a contributing factor. Uh, when I analyzed our pool, I found that there was a split. Some communities such as James Charles and Dreams are perceived to exhibit a lot of toxic and chronically online behavior, at least during the time of the allegations. Some like EDP and Colleen Ballingers uh, have kind of a mixed bag and some were neutral or friendly, such as Ava Chris Tyson, who is a member of the Mr. Beast team and Cody Ko. So this is the assumption that I'm making. I don't think toxic communities themselves are inherently that big of a factor. I do think, however, that toxic, rowdy, and un uneducated content communities will breed people. That was a really poor choice of words. Let me think about that a second. Uh, I do think, however, that toxic, rowdy, and uneducated content communities will uh, cultivate people who exhibit undesirable behavior. Toxic communities can also breed extremely loyal fans. All right, gender orientation. Eight out of the 10 that I surveyed identified as males. That is a trend, hooray, we found another factor that matters. Next one, size. Now, size has two factors attached to it, actually. The first one is obviously the size of the creator. And what I learned was, in my pool of 10, we had some outliers. So, so Cody Cohen and Call Me Carson uh, were both the very smallest ones. They had a sub count that was I think less than a million or even less than 500k. <clears throat> and here's what I learned. So all of them with the ex exception of the two very small scale outliers at the bottom had a minimum of 1.5 million subscribers with an average of about 2.76 and a 1.6 million to 3.9 million box box plot range. This factor I think doesn't matter as much since the pool I drew from were all popular creators. Now, is there something to, to be said about famous people becoming preds? Yes, absolutely. Uh, but... Rate of growth. So I did this by plotting out the, the sub count that they had the year before they did the alleged actions and, and the amount of growth that they had during the year that, that they allegedly did uh, did the no-no. Yandere Dev was our outlier in this metric. His garbage upload schedule combined with his niche uh, content made for a minimal rate of growth uh, relative to his channel size. And also Yandere Dev had, you know, other factors pointing towards bad behavior anyway, such as, I don't know, the fact that he programmed a video game where you kill high school girls and look up their skirts. Anywho, here's what I learned from this data set. The two highest rates of growth came from Dream and Ava Chris Tyson, who's part of the Mr. Beast family. Now, if we exclude these two as outliers because they have an outrageous amount of growth anyways that dwarfs all the other examples, we had an average of about 2.8 times and a 1.6 to four times box plot range. All of them had a minimum of 1.5 times when it came to growth. The rates of growth that these creators were experiencing were on par for how quickly creators of their size are expected to grow when they're successful. However, the common trend that we can actually pick out is that all of them were largely successful. So now the year. Here's what I learned. Most of these cases occurred from 2016 to 2018. Now, is this relevant? I don't think the year specifically is a relevant factor. However, it is important to note that 2016 and 2017 and kind of just that period in general was huge for content creation, especially on YouTube. This is back during the time where people were, especially in our generation, when we were, 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 were repping content creators like they were sports stars. And you know, that we still had shit going like YouTube Rewind and weird shit like that. So I do think that, that the current state of content creation culture matters, but I don't necessarily think that we're in a period in which that kind of thing will happen more often because I think at this point, creators are a lot more careful about how they talk to their fans and who they let reach out to them. 
So, um, I was going to add mental stability to the list of factors, but not only would that be difficult to measure, but we don't even know what that creator's mental stability was actually like during that period. Plus, if they were doing these things anyways, it's safe to say that they either had a fair dose of sexual deviancy, far beyond what's considered weird, or they were wildly and dangerously immature, or they had some other instability anyways. And after glancing at the chart again, it's not hard to make this assumption. A lot of these cases really came out of left field. If you want an example of totally unexpected sexual deviancy that is not related to inappropriate behaviors towards people with underdeveloped prefrontal cortexes, look at Atrioc. Nobody saw that shit coming. So it's often really hard to predict this kind of behavior, especially since in this case, when we're talking about content creators, what we see online of these people are very carefully tailored personas. Now, what was the conclusion I came to? My main takeaway is that while there are a lot of trends, just because a creator has those traits, it does not make them a, a diddler. It's more likely that a person who does those kinds of things has a tendency towards that kind of thing in the first place. Now, as far as allegations go, toxic communities and a very quick rate of growth, in addition to maybe a younger audience, will make these allegations more likely. So now that I have all this wonderful, loosely verifiable, wildly unreliable data, I could now begin to answer the questions that I had. So number one, could you predict future groomings with this? This is a very long ChatGPT thread. I also would like to preface that this probably means fucking nothing, okay? I don't think any of these people are, are, are diddling anybody. These are male creators in the 21 to 30 range uh, who also have a, a large portion of minors in their audience. And so I plugged in my list and I was like, out of this list who's very loyal fans? Who in this list has a female audience of 20 or more? Who here has experienced a large surge of growth in the last two years? So based on those three questions that I asked it after the grapefruit, I said, list all the creators I named with this format. John Pork, 28, yes, no, yes, which means that yes, he has loyal fans. No, he does not have a female audience over 20%. And yes, he experienced a growth surge within the recent two years. And it gave me a list of 15. So the ones who ticked all three boxes are, uh, okay, again, I don't think these people are going to talk to minors, except for Call Me Carson, he kind of already did it twice, but you know, Call Me Carson, Saikuno, Tommy Init, Laser Beam, and Myth are, are the ones who, who tick all the boxes. And I, I would like to take a brief moment to reiterate, um, I, I don't, I, almost nothing in this video is meant to be taken seriously, if you couldn't tell. This is an idea I thought of when I was bored in painting class. And the very last question, when am I projected to groom someone? Well, let's go through the list. Am I male? Yes. 21 to 30 year old? Yes. Does my audience have minors? No, there are barely any minors in my audience. Did I have a growth rate of at least 1.5 times since last year? We can go ahead and skip over that one. And finally, do I have a minimum of 1.5 million subs? No, I do not. But you guys have the power to change that. So uh, if you if you enjoyed the video and you want to boost my odds of making the rounds on Twitter and getting into a moist critical video for the wrong reasons, hit that subscribe button and I'll and maybe one day I'll get hit by an allegation. Wow, this video was fucking terrible.